Hi, welcome to the fourth edition of NBN. Welcome. We are thankful with how many of you contacted us with great news this week. The first person that I spoke with regarding NBN was Melena Markham, and she told me that she is starting her first garden. She started it inside their home. She used paper cups with dirt and seeds and light and is going very well for her. Today, when I spoke with her, she let me know that her bush beans came up overnight and they're already about an inch tall. So I think she's doing a splendid job. Congratulations on your garden. I know you look forward to getting it in the ground so that things can grow and Rodney can make great food with it this summer. Hi, Rodney. We miss seeing you. It's, you know, social distancing kind of put a damper on things. Our second story is about Jared Basham. He is part of... Um, our life group, excuse me, he and his family. He is a seventh grader at John Glenn. His mom, Kristen, works here with me, and she said that he went out to the chicken coop without being asked or told, cleaned the chicken coop, hauled all the stuff away that needed to be taken away, put down new bedding for them. And she, I know mom was very excited that she had one of her kids just do this on his own without any prompting. So great job, Jared, keep up the good work. And our next story is about baby Solomon that I told you about before. He was born early, and he is the grandson of Lanny and Patty Boffman. And the great news this week is that Patty got to hold her new grandson. He, as of last night, weighs 2 pounds, 12 ounces, and he is growing and doing well. But the family does still need your prayers. He's, of course, still in the hospital and she goes back and forth. They have a daughter, Andy, at home. She's five, and Mike, um, Solomon's daddy, has had some medical issues recently, so please keep them in your prayers, and we look forward to hearing the story about baby Solomon going home one of these days. My next story is about Lauren Morey. She graduated from college this winter. She graduated early. She's been working and saving money she was able to put down a down payment on her first home. So she is now a resident of Fish Lake, Indiana. Congratulations, Lauren. We hope you'll be very happy and healthy in your new home. Good job. And I wanted to give a bit of a shout out to the Oregon Davis School Corporation. I talked to you a week or two ago about John Glenn putting signs in the senior class students' yards and um, letting them know they're being thought of. And Oregon Davis has done something very similar. They have done the yard signs that have the, each student's name that lives in that house with their senior picture on the sign. This is our own Trisha Hewitt. She is a nurse at Oregon Davis and she is one of the folks that drove around and put the yard signs in the kids' yards. So thank you to Oregon Davis School Corporation for honoring the seniors in our community. And we look forward to being able to celebrate in more extensive ways here before long, we hope. My next story is about Jean and Marsha Reese. They attend here along with um, their three children. Um, the oldest is Scott, he and his family, they were raised here. And then um, Jenny Seigert and her daughter Megan attend here and then Ryan Reese and his wife Melody. These uh, signs that are on grandpa and grandma's windows are encouraging signs. They are made by Lincoln, Addison and Callie. Um, they live just behind grandpa and grandma so the children are able to leave their yard, go into grandpa and grandma's backyard and hang notes of encouragement, signs, poster board that the kids have made every single day since this has begun in our lives for the whole month or however long it's been. I've kind of lost track, but they've colored flowers and it has each petal has the name of one of the Reese grandchildren in it. This one on a different day was a scripture. It says, be still and know that I am God from Psalms 46:10. So Jean and Marcia know every morning when they wake up, there, there's going to be another sign on their sliding glass doors and that the kids are thinking of them. They are still social distancing, but they want grandpa and grandma to know that they're thinking of them and that they love them. And I'm sure it must bring a smile to Jean and Marcia's faces each day. Good job, kids. You know, I love you. 
And our last story today is uh, came from Christy Clark. She's an administrator at Miller's Mary Manor in Walkerton. Christy attends here and she contacted Pastor Brian this week and said that because of our YouTube um, videos, our worship services being um, shown, that they are able to live stream the services into the patient's rooms because they all now have um, a laptop or a tablet of some sort in each resident's room and so they are able to watch our worship service and um, I know I heard then that Dolly Scribner who um, attended here for many years in, when she was able is a resident now at Miller's and Christy said that she particularly enjoyed um, Wally the puppet and uh, the skit that Pastor Brian put on so uh, it was good to know that Dolly was laughing and enjoying and that the residents are able to worship with us on Sunday mornings. Um, we really miss you. I hope you all know that. And uh, we look forward to time together in the future. We still don't know when that will be. Um, but we are thankful for sunshiny days. And my mama always said, as maybe yours did as well, April showers bring May flowers. So even when it rains in April, we know that there's going to be good coming from it. So I wish you the best weekend possible. And um, please don't forget that we love to have good stories here for No Bad News at Coons Lake Missionary Church. I hope to see you next Thursday. Take care and be well. We love you all and God be with you. Thanks. <music>